Home buying season is heating up, and we have record-breaking home prices in America, along with record-breaking pay lines for pansies and potting soil at lows, but now home prices are suddenly falling. What's really going on in the housing market? Good neighbors, manicured lawns, and forever rising house prices, or is the housing market about to collapse like never before? Today Paul Eberhardt and Charles Hugh Smith are investigating exactly what happened. Listen to the full podcast to understand what's going on in the housing market. What's going on in the housing market right now and where the housing market is going from here. Enjoy. And, you know, housing is interesting to all of us because we all have to have shelter, whether we rent it or buy it or you know lease it, whatever. And I've been following the real estate market, you know, from like the previous bubble in 2000, the early 2000s. And I think that's actually what uh, created my audience, you know, uh, starting to write about housing and questioning the conventions about, you know, the bubble never pops and, you know, they're not making more land, et cetera, et cetera. So anyways, it's kind of a revisiting um, uh, topics that I covered before, but it's a different situation now in in some ways. So um, that's what makes it interesting. That's right. So let's cover the conventions and the confusions. And and now, Charles, it's like, you know, right now it's hot to talk about housing all of a sudden. And and Charles, there's there's a lot of propaganda and outright confusion about there out there. So let me give you a couple really quick example, Charles. On April 20th, just last month, CNN comes out with an article titled Home Prices Hit Another Record High in March. So it's pretty self-explanatory across the country, nationwide, record high home prices. I think it was like 357 or 375. I can't remember the exact number, but you get the point. Then on April 25th, so just a couple weeks ago, Realtor, right? Like supposedly this top-notch source of information comes out with this, I don't know if it's an article or study or what it was, but it says, home prices have begun falling. Here are the cities where they're down the most. And here's a direct quote from this article, Charles, and I quote, This is not a repeat of the Great Recession when a housing bubble popped and prices plummeted across the country. These are mostly smaller decreases that don't portend another crash. So now, Charles, a lot of the mainstream and media picked up on this article in this Realtor report, and they started talking about it. And I looked at it, and I saw, oh, my goodness, Toledo, Ohio, this is number one for falling more in price than anywhere in the entire country. So, Charles. (laughs) Well, I love your use of the incentive structure. And of course, I use that term, too, because it it really does define, you know, whatever we're talking about, where are the incentives for and against, right? The disincentives and the incentives. And as you say, there are massive institutional incentives to keep housing prices high. Well, let's look and see what that took to keep housing prices rising over the last, say, 20 years. Well, it took the Federal Reserve for as one institution to increase their balance sheet from 800 billion to, you know, like 9 trillion. And they bought a lot of mortgage-backed securities. That's how they suppressed the mortgage rate. They bought over a trillion dollars of mortgage-backed securities. In other words, they just soaked up uh, mortgages and um, that kept the rates down. So there's been an enormous um, institutional expense already taken on to, to, to keep housing rising, right? But I think that it becomes a really um, and it becomes impossible when you reach these limits of of, um, what we would call diminishing returns. In other words, the the Fed has already kind of um, shot its wad in some way. And you can say, okay, they're going to they can print another nine trillion. But when you get to extremes in these financial markets, then you push it to a new extreme. It no longer works in the same way. It was like the low hanging fruit on the mortgage tree has been picked. Now, as mortgage rates, mortgage rates click higher, who's going to buy these houses that are already overpriced for like the, 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 the 90 percent can no longer afford houses in these big cities? So. It, it, you're, you're, you're running into these limits. Like there's simply, people simply don't make enough money to pay this mortgage for this million dollar house. And so then what you, you end up having is, you know, rich people selling their house for a million and buying another house for a million. But it's like, well, that's just the top 10% trading between themselves. And, and so you can say, well, there's, there's a lot of buying and selling, but it's all like, no, but the bottom 90% is still priced out. And so, um, you have to have, 
uh, an economy that generates enough good paying jobs to support housing at the level it's at. And, I, and if, that, if, if that falls apart, then subsidies aren't going to compensate. You know, in other words, you would basically have to be paying people one hundred thousand dollars a year so that they could afford their million dollar house. You know, and, and so and it's all like, well, what's it going to take? And it's like, well, you're going to have to print 15 trillion a year or something uh, or 10 trillion. And it's all like, well, how is how's that? What kind of effect is that going to have on the economy? So I think we're running into financial limits on the free money thing, which, as you say, is, is has been the solution for forever. How do you support asset prices? You subsidize it and you throw away, you throw out a lot of free money. So if it's no longer free money, then then those extremes are going to uh, go away. And so um, in terms of selling to the American public, you know, it's interesting, you know, um, you're, you're younger than I am. But so you were just a kid, maybe in the, in the oil crisis, uh, the gas line crisis of 73. But um, people respond you know, maybe grudgingly, but they respond to reality. And so if energy costs keep going higher and um, food costs go, keep going higher and there, there's a recession and people lose their jobs, well, they're just going to make adjustments, right? And um, so I'm not too worried about that. In terms of selling it as as the way to go, well, I, I don't know. I, I, I can't. I, I can only say that, you know, there's deep roots in every culture in America about frugality, right? Every culture that has a, a, a place in America has a has a long history of frugality. And so I look at it and say, well, maybe the last 20 years has been this sort of, um, uh, ex, you know, unrealistic expansion of, of abundance, all based on printing money, as you and I both know. And that once printing money is no longer possible or no, doesn't work anymore, then, then there's going to be adjustment where we have to live within our means. And so... Um, and that's not bad. Hey, you know, frugality is uh, not like some kind of punishment. <laughs> Just means you stop wasting, uh, you know, uh, stuff. And, and uh, so and, and that's what makes your economy efficient. Right. I mean, so anyways, uh, that's off topic. But yeah, um, to summarize, um, you know, housing is no longer an easy decision. That's that's really what we're talking about. You can't just buy a house for a quarter a million or a half a million dollars and assume it's going to double in price from now on. That would that would not be a wise assumption to make. It might or it might not. So, you you know, you're going to have to include. Other factors in your decision other than the assumption that housing is only going to double and triple because that's all it's done for 20 years. So, Charles, we've uh, talked about housing mostly today and i appreciate you having us on so just the last question is just so so i know we've spent this conversation on housing but just as we're moving through spring i'm so happy it's spring because it's got the garden going on and and hopefully my thumb will turn green this year it probably won't but i've been trying my hardest it's the third year in a row but is housing what's on your radar your most or <clears throat> i know you've been writing a lot of different articles you just wrote the housing one you've written the the um one about the money and the just what is money recently and i know you're hitting a lot of different topics so what is on your radar the most right now or are there a couple things on your radar the most or what are you looking at as we move through spring and in the summer here charles well <clears throat> you know i tend to look at the longer picture like you do and so i guess i'm thinking about self-reliance which is one of the big topics we're talking about that housing relates to you know like where can you live that's you know you can kind of have a reliable source of life's essentials right and that um it's less likely that bad things are going to happen in your locale right self-reliance is one big thing and i think the nature of work is a big topic for me i think work has changed dramatically in, in the last 40 years and, and that change is accelerating and, and I don't think we really understand it because you know we're living in the moment and so like remote work is is one example but there's a lot of other changes going on in the work environment which is why four or five million people are quitting their jobs every month that's just extraordinary and so um we didn't get to talk about that but I, I'm looking at the changes in work and and burnout you know in other words the, the lifestyle many people are leading is not sustainable so they burn out they physically run into their barriers their limits and then they crash they can't live with this kind of extreme stress long work hours long commutes and, and 
and all the stuff that goes um, into um, trying to make a living in America at this point in time. So I think people are voting with their feet. And that's part of why I, I, you know, uh, what's happening in the housing market is people are going, I can't live like this anymore. I don't want to live like this anymore. What are my options? And that's really um, that's that's of interest to me. And that that relates to housing. But it's also about work and your your environment. And um, in terms of being, is it self-reliant? You know, and so those are the issues that are uh, uh, top of my list. <laughs> well, there you have it, folks. Work is important. Housing is important. But most important is doing what you can for yourself and your community and your area and friends and family to try and navigate your way through it. Charles Hugh Smith, I'd like to thank you for joining us again on Silver Doctors. Thank you, Paul. It was a great discussion.